This is uh, Morten from Inkish. Uh, we are still here with the Real Estate Print in uh, uh, just outside Nice in France. Still talking to my good friend uh, Sander. Hi, Morten. <laughs> I mean, we should uh, we should have uh, gloves because we are yeah. shaking hands so many times. <laughs> so, um, Sander, uh, first of all, uh, warm welcome with the uh, ProSet 75 or the Dragon, right? Um, let's dive directly into it. You announced it some years ago, or yes. one and a half year ago, something like that. What is the biggest challenge moving uh, from, I mean, because you have so much experience in both tonal-based Kochi and continuous feed on the inkjet. What is the biggest challenge going to Kochi, the inkjet? Well, the, the, the big challenge with Kochi inkjet uh, on the B2 size, so keep in mind we, we're printing on B2 plus size. Uh, the big challenge is, you know, you put a lot of ink on the paper, you need to get it dry, and then you need to revert the paper and print the second side. So that, that, that in, in, uh, on a variety of different papers, I think that is the biggest challenge. Uh, so m moving the paper, making sure it's, it's nicely tied around the drum while there's a lot of ink on the, on, on the paper, get it dry, revert it again and do, and do duplex in one time. And that at 4,500 sheets per hour was, yeah, it seemed to be quite a challenge. Yeah, I get that. And now you fix that kind of thing. And, yes. and let's talk about some of the details because I think that you know, uh, in the beginning, when uh, when uh, the the inkjet machines came to market, it was required to have pre-coated paper, for example, right? And you mentioned yourself a variety of uh, substrates here. Does this require uh, pre-coated papers? No, as you can see in this configuration, we don't have a pre-coater uh, attached to the printer, uh, so it, it's not required. Uh, we do offer the customers the ability to add a pre-coater uh, to the printer, uh, especially for substrate where you might want to have a higher print quality. Uh, some uncoated paper, you do see a, a, a difference using the undercoat, but it's definitely not mandatory. So it's really dependent on customer requirements, if it adds any value or not. So with some papers, and I see some, some print samples and uh, comparison, you don't see a difference at all. Uh, with some print, uh, prints or some papers, you do see, you do see a difference. And uh, you mentioned 4,500 sheets per hour. Does that mean that you have different let's say speeds depending on quality or is it always 4500 no, or no it's 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 more dependent on the weight so if you go above uh and i would do a top of mind 300 gsm we slow down the press a little bit but that's more to do with the drying yeah uh, because with the heavier paper you know the paper absorbs more energy so we need to slow down the printer to make sure on the end of the print the ink is actually dry and just also to nail it because it's a water-based technology basically. it is a water-based ink correct yeah. yeah so that is environmental friendly but it, yeah, like I said, you know, it requires more drying power than if you were to use UV ink. So now we have talked a little bit about the paper. And as you mentioned also, when we had the walkthrough, you have like the cassettes that we can see behind you. And you also have a pallet feeder yes. with, with a configuration. Uh, I, I would have thought that most printing companies would have selected or picked the pallet feeder. But of course, it gives a lot of flexibility to have this. How, how do you see the ratio between, I mean, when will people use what? Or can it be, or yeah, can that's, it be combined? That's a, or? that's a good question. But I'm, I, you know, I'm physically, I wouldn't like to lift a whole day B2 sheets, uh, especially if you use heavy weight. So I would say a pellet feeder does make a lot of sense. Uh, but I think it really depends on the customer applications. What substrates, how many changes do they want to do? And of course, keep in mind, we can add uh, two, the, the default is two drawers, but you can add an additional two and you can add the pellet feeder. So you can, you can pick and choose whatever configuration is suitable for your application. But I, I do think the pellet feeder offers also a lot of uh, added value. Also because a machine like this, a tank should work as much as it can, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the printer is really designed, I would say, to run probably at least two shifts a day. Yeah. Uh, but it's really designed to run 24 hours a day. Yeah. So now we have left the paper feeding and we go into the machine. Uh, is the print heads, are they newly developed or is it something that you could take off the shelf? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's partly newly developed, so we use our core technology, but we really adjusted it also for this printer. So the, the print heads are Rico print heads, they're liquid cooled, they are designed to, to be a little bit smaller in footprint, really to accommodate a, a high resolution printing in this, in this press. Uh, but the core technology is, is our successful Rico print heads, the, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, you have, let's say, the if you look at the machine, of course, you're using technology that Rico has developed for several years and have a lot of experience with. And as you say, you, you manage to get over the drying because, I mean, also if you look at some of the competitors, you can add more dryers for the same reason, basically, right? They need to dry it before you can turn them and go on exactly. to the next page. Yeah, yeah. 
So when you have that drying system here and you can use it on water-based uh, ink, does that mean also that in the, in the drying tunnel that you showed us before here in the background, it basically becomes totally dry in that period of time that it takes to go there? And, yes. and, yeah. and is that a combination? You said they had the heated belt. That is, that is uh, heat, of course. We also have like hot air in it and things like that? Or? Yeah, so it's a, it's a combination of technologies, uh, really to make sure the, the ink is really, really dry and it's completely dry when coming out of the printer, but also to make sure that the paper remains very flat. Mm. So with continuous feed, we used to put a re-moisturizing in it to make sure the paper is really nice and flat. With this technology, we don't need that. And still the, the sheets come out really flat, uh, which makes it very suitable also to, for the finishing, uh, uh, which you do after the printing, of mm. course. Um, when you look at a machine like this, and obviously you have visited a lot of printing companies in your time, uh, what kind of companies do you see uh, should be most interested in this technology? I, I think, well, any commercial printer, uh, it, it's a suitable press. So I would say general commercial print, it, it's still a growing market in, in digital. Uh, you can run a, a wide variety of applications. Also book printing, you know, the sheet size offers a lot of, of advantage in that. Uh, so I think, yeah, you can use it for anything. The print quality really allows you to do anything you like to, to do on the press. And uh, as you know, when we did the online uh, interview together on, on the Pro 75 and also the VC80000, uh, I was just thinking that, that if you have a machine like this and, and you talk about the, all the applications it can do, um, what about operational costs? Obviously cheaper than toner, of course, right? But where is it when you look at, let's say, compared to offset? Yeah, compared to offset, and, and that's, um, that's a good, a good question. Uh, because I think it's, it's, the total cost of ownership is important, but it's also allow you to, do, to be efficient. So what we see happening is that the run lengths are going down, really to operate an offset press, changing plate, but also to have the, 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 the right operator uh, behind the press is becoming more and more challenging. So with this press, it's really friendly to operate and you can run everything you like. And it's, it's really behaving like a, a home-based printer. You can just put anything in the queue and it will, will print it out. And the fact that it's, it's B2 sheet size allows you also to easily transfer offset volume into digital. So I think that's a big advantage. You don't need to change your old workflow. So within your existing workflow, you can easily transfer your jobs from offset to digital or make even a combination. So if you have a long run length, of course, still offset is very, uh, a viable solution. But if you need to do some reprints or maybe some uh, language changes or some with variable data, you can easily put it on the Z75. So, um now this is the first machine from Rico, cut sheet uh, inkjet device. Do you see that that in the future of Rico is that combination continue to be like continuous feed, also toner based, and also uh, inkjet uh, cut sheet? Is that a path you see in the future as well? Yes, absolutely. I think that, you know if you look at the three different type of technologies, they're all very nicely complementary to each other. So there's still a lot of, of growth in the market in the digital print market, uh, and I think every technology offers. Uh, their own added value to, to our customers. So if you look at Kutchi Toner, it can print on everything, but it's limited to the SR3 size. If you look at the, the, the Z75, B2 inkjet, very nice, let's say for the mid-segment. And if you really want to have high productivity, you go to the 70 or 80,000. And with the 80,000, you know, we can print over 12,000 BT shoots an hour, which is, you know, more productive than the Z75. So they really stack up really nicely for our customers. So the way that you have positioned uh, the different types of products basically complement each other very well. Exactly. Well, I, a question that might be a little bit strange because I know it's a very new machine, but I was just, I was just wondering because, I mean, one of the things that people are talking about these days is also digital packaging. And you have also high grammage on this one. Could this also be used as a, let's say, a packaging digital printer? Or is that something that Rico might be let's say, uh, make a model that is more suitable for that, or? No, no, with this model, you can print up to 400 GSM or 0.6 caliper on, on paper, which is absolutely, it's very suitable for, for digital, for, for the packaging, lightweight packaging. Uh, and yes, customers will uh, definitely use the, this printer for that. And we did some testing already. Uh, and of course, there's more interest than just release a print in the market. So yeah, there are customers already looking at that. Um, and it's very suitable to print that kind of applications on the Z75. Mm. Uh, last question, and, and you may not uh, be able to answer it, but I'm just curious about it because I was wondering, because uh, I don't know if it's true, but sometimes I hear people are talking a little bit about whether, let's say, uh, foilings and, you know, uh, 
um, laminations and, and uh, UV varnish is, is an issue on, on, on digital. Is that something that you have tested on this machine? Or? Yes, we have, we have tested it. So using our prints to do varnishing lamination uh, with systems like, like Scodix, for instance, uh, and it's very suitable. So this, I think this is also the big advantage of having water-based ink. Uh, it allows you to, to, to do anything with it. Uh, so that's really suitable. And as also here within Realista Print, and I think you will do some filming or across the factory, you will also see a lot of those fishing capabilities uh, uh, being applied in this, uh, this operation. So how big a day is it for Santa Sonda? Sorry? How big a day is it for Santa Sonda? Uh, well, it's, it's a very big day. Uh, as you know, you know, and I said it before, we've been talking a long time about this press. So I'm really proud that we can finally show it in live action at the actual customer here in Europe. Uh, so yeah, it, for me it's a very big day and I'm really excited. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Martin.